episode we're going to leave behind the group tour of southern Mexico and we're going to look at my time in Cozumel wow if I died and went to my own personal hell it would be Ikea um, if I died and went to my own heaven it would be Cozumel what am I talking about come on let's start the show so we arrived at Playa del Carmen you know it was okay it was okay pretty um it's what I would imagine Bali is like I haven't been there but just lots of Australians acting drunk and obnoxious but just with Americans doing the same thing so I was walking the streets of Playa del Carmen and this American dude walks up to me and he's from the other side of the road he's like hey hey you hey you anyway like I'm like what does this guy want he crosses the road doesn't look at traffic it's just like what does this big fat man want anyway he gets like really close to me he gets his little fanny pack out and um, unzips it it's got like three US dollars he starts waving it in my face like take me to blah 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 hotel take me to blah 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 hotel and I'm like he thought I was Mexican he thought I was Mexican I mean blonde hair blue eyes of course I'm Mexican it's Australian flag on my thongs and I don't know anyway I was just like mm, play it along lo siento senor no hablas inglés so anyway the group tour is over I'm staying with Savannah for a couple of nights just chilling out made some new friends the play all coming was okay but it was time to go so we're on the ferry really nice ride and band playing pretty cool hey anyway get to Cozumel my hostel that I'm working at is just a couple of meters really away from the ferry station it's fantastic to dive hostel yeah so i spent the next couple of days working at this hostel I'll, I'll tell you what to do so we're making beds and laundry mostly it sounds pretty um pretty easy really pretty innocuous uh, i almost died several times i thought it was the thing was going to kill me i really did oh the so you know the bunk's really high and like you have to get in there and tuck things in and all that and i'm like but this is a bit funny, it seems a bit risky. Anyway, you know, it's cool, that was fine. Got that, got there in the end. The thing that really scared me and thought it was going to kill me was doing the washing. So the washing machine, fine, very modern, get that, cool. The bag to take the washing out was kind of this falling apart dive bag thing. I'm like, okay, whatever, chuck it all in. Then you have to walk through the bathroom into a cubicle, which is in the cubicle. Um, it's got a ladder there and a pulley system. So I walk, I attach the bag to the pulley system, climb up the ladder through the manhole on the roof. Uh, I'm on the roof trying to yank, yank, yank up this um, pulley, trying to get the the laundry through the roof without falling back in or smashing the bag and getting having to go back down to get all the laundry. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die, but I didn't. Um, obviously, you know, live to do more laundry. Yay! So I'm in Cozumel for a couple of days by myself. It's okay. Better than Playa del Carmen. Not as touristy. But if you want to get to a decent beach, you have to catch a taxi, basically. Except for this one little beach called Playa Azul. Um, really beautiful beach. It's where all the locals go. But still, it's an hour's walk out of town. So I decided to go a bit further afield. The guys I was working with didn't recommend it. They said it's a bit of a waste of money, a bit of a waste of time. It's mostly where the cruisers go and things like that. So very limited kind of beach club kind of things. As you know, I've been ripped off before in Playa del Carmen. Anyway, I was, you know, I was just going to risk it. Why not? So anyway, I take a taxi out to one of the further off beaches. It was beautiful, quite beautiful. I was wary. I was wary. I'd been ripped off before the beach club, so I was wary. Uh, but the guy's like, hey, all you need is 400 pesos and you can drink and eat as much as you want. I'm like, fine, thank you. And so that's it. I made it short. That's it. And like, I don't have to pay anything more. He's like, no, man, it's cool. This is what it is. I'm like, oh, yeah. So I had a really nice afternoon. Um, I had some, some calamari. I had a few margaritas, a pina colada maybe, I can't remember. This place was closing at five, which yeah, fair enough, it's a fair way out of town. I make my way towards the exit and the guy's like, sorry, sorry, you haven't paid, you haven't paid. I'm like, what? Not a fucking again. And yeah, 
whatever it was wasn't covered. He didn't explain it very well. I asked to see the manager, I was going to be hoo ha ha. I had about five US dollars on me. They ended up with that. Um, and they're like, okay man, you better get out of here. It's about now that the alligators start to come out. They've already fucking come out, man. But, uh, you know, he's, and I laughed and he's like, no man, there are alligators here. Of course there are. Of course there are. So at this stage, there's not many taxis left at the rink. And I was getting worried because I no longer had any cash on me and they don't accept card in most taxis. Now I probably wouldn't be comfortable paying for it with a card. Anyway, I find this dude and I'm like, man, I have like 50 pesos. I need to, can you get me to the nearest ATM and I will pay you whatever, a normal amount, 200 pesos. But 300 man, just to get, just to get to the closest fucking um, ATM. Cajero. That is achieved, I pay two or three hundred pesos for the privilege of just getting to an ATM, still way away from the middle of town where I needed to be. I'm like, nah, thank you, goodbye, I'll walk the rest of the way, bitch. So I did that, went a few miles on the way, and yeah, I found this beautiful place uh, that had a really nice sunset. Um, that was where I was going to take Bernardo. <sighs> the day had arrived. Bernardo was coming to Cozumel, finally. Yeah, it was a pretty special arrival. He got off the boat, dropped his bags there, and ran over to me, and we kissed and cuddled and all that stuff. And um, yeah, it was kind of like something out of the movie. It all was, really. Yeah, it was so good to see him, smell him, and taste him and be with him again. We just spent most of that first day just uh, walking around the city, city, town. We, got a couple of, we did some shots in Mexical, uh, beers and things. We found our favorite little uh, bar just across from uh, the hostel called Woody's. And yeah, kind of Americanized, but yeah, cute and nice. And there was a good singer there that seemed to like us. So the next few days we really spent just getting to know each other, uh, having amazing sex, that was awesome, trying different cafes and bars and things. I also had to work during this time, so fearing for my life, doing the laundry, uh, that was not so fun. But yeah, we just got to know each other. God, fuck man, we had both had some fucked up relationships in the past. Fucked up partners, fucked up situations, fucked up stuff from childhood, fucked up stuff from our everything. Like it's, you know, but really, it just seemed like, fuck, finally it's time to meet someone nice. Like, we both came into each other's lives at just the right time. We've both given up on love, we've both given up on all that shit, really. You know, having kids and a family and a partner and a husband. Fuck, no, no, thank you. I didn't want that, neither did until we kind of realized that we could have that with each other. Yeah, we spent time together, we um, had more and more amazing sex. That was lovely. And I even watched Bridget Jones' diary. Like, I broke up with a girl. One of the reasons was because she wanted me to go see Bridget Jones' diary or something. And I was like, that's not who I am. I'm not a fucking rom-com dude. It's not my bag. I don't do that shit, man. But, turns out, if you actually like someone and love someone, you can bear almost any rom-com. And I did that. And you know, I got to understand his taste in Britney Spears. And like, it's just it's gay and it's really poppy and blah, blah, blah. You know, could identify with her struggles and they kind of reflected his own struggles that he was going through at the time and why he gets so much from her music and I was like, I actually respect that and I actually found a newfound uh, respect, I guess, for Britney Spears so, thanks, Bernardo Anyway, um, so things were perfect really, really amazing um, I got to a time 
I had to bring out the rings that I bought in Oaxaca and Merida. And I couldn't decide which one I wanted to give him or what they even were for. Are they, are they um, engagement rings? Are they commitment rings? Are they what the fuck are they? You know, we went to, I took him to play Azul, closest beach in town. It was beautiful. Uh, we had a few beers, we had to swim in the ocean. I had more amazing sex on the beach. So we're just sitting there and I get some two things from my bag. And um, like I have, I don't know if this is a great way to propose, but uh, it's just like, so I guess which, which hand would you like? And it's like, oh my god, what? Like, yeah, which hand, which hand, which hand? And it's like, mm, this one. And like, ah! And yeah, it was a ring. And then the other one was obviously another ring, which I didn't know which one you'd like better. But I gave them to him. I gave both. Uh, yeah, so we both had matching rings. What were they? I had wanted to propose, like fully propose, but talking and thinking about it made me think, well, do I really want that? Like, you know, I didn't want it to be a holiday fling. I wanted this to be real. So I thought, no, just take it slow. And this is a pre-engagement ring we decided upon when we talked about it, what it actually was and meant. So we were, after that we were like, I love you my future husband, and all this cheesy stuff. So that was very special. The ring ceremony had been completed and we decided to go back to the hostel and we decided to go to Woody's because that's what we always did just before we went back to the hostel. Yeah. Had a giant margarita each, of course, as is the custom. Uh, but Bernardo went up to the dude that was singing that night. And I was like, what's, what's all this about, baby? It's like, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Anyway, what happened next was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. It was one of the greatest gifts I've ever been given. Um, and Bernardo, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for it. It's taken me a long time to be able to watch it because of obviously what happened later um, and all the emotions I connected with it at the time and I'll never have it again, blah, blah, blah. But you know, it was a beautiful time and this was a beautiful gift. So I'm going to leave that for this week. You'll see what the gift is um, on our next episode of Down Under and South of the Border. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe, man. Please subscribe. So you don't miss a thing. Um, and next week we'll be looking at that very gift. What is it? You'll find out then. Stay tuned, guys. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more butt shots and whatever. Love you all. Adios, amigos.